Let me introduce you to uh, Eric Swenson. He runs a service desk for an IT company in uh, Conshaw Hawk in Pennsylvania. He's registered as a libertarian, describes himself as an independent. He says he's undecided. Eric? Thank you, Anderson. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Eric. So my question is concerning groceries. Grocery yeah. prices have gone up uh, quite a bit in the last four years. Yeah. And some people blame former President Trump. Some people blame President Biden. Who would you say is correct? And what would you do to bring prices down for Americans? Thank you, Eric. And you're absolutely right. You know it. I know it. I think most Americans know it. Price of groceries is still too high. And we need to address it in a number of ways. One of my aspects of doing what we need to do to bring down the cost of living for working people and the middle class in America is to address the issue of grocery prices. Part of my background and how I come to it is probably a new approach grounded in a lot of my experiences as a former attorney general where I took on price gouging. And m part of my plan is to create a new approach that is the first time that we will have a national ban on price gouging, which is companies taking advantage of the desperation and need of the American consumer and jacking up prices without any consequence or accountability. So that is one way. But to your point, Eric, there, you know, there are a number of issues that we need to address in terms of bringing down the cost of living. It includes what we need is a really a new approach that I bring to the, the issue of affordable housing, including, for example, rent. And again, I bring to it my experience, knowing what has been happening in terms of how corporations have been buying up blocks of property to diminish competition and then rents get jacked up. And addressing that, both in terms of making sure that there is a consequence and accountability for that, but also investing in people's dreams of home ownership, you know, knowing that for too long, frankly, both administrations, I mean, both administrations and both parties, Democrats and Republicans, haven't done enough to deal with the issue of housing. And we need a, pr a new approach that includes working with the private sector. I say that as a, as a, as a devout public servant working with the private sector to cut through the red tape, working with home builders, working with developers to create tax incentives so that we can create more housing yeah. supply and bring down the price. L let me just ask you about price gouging. I looked at your plan. Uh, you talk about going after price gougers, and I'm quoting from the plan, on essential goods during emergencies or times of crisis. I get that. How does that help, though, someone like Eric with prices that for years, the grocery price has just been high? Well, first of all, Anderson, as you know, and obviously CNN has been covering extensively uh, what has been happening in the state of Georgia, North Carolina, Florida. It's a real issue. I, I was attorney general of California. I was the top law enforcement officer of the biggest state in the country. I took this issue on because it affects a lot of people. And I'm not going to apologize for the fact that we need to actually deal with accountability when these, not all, in fact, most don't, but when... Companies are taking advantage of the desperation and the need of the American people. We saw it actually during the pandemic as well, where because of supply chain issues, we, there was a, a reduction of supply, and then they would inflate the price of everyday necessities. Not to mention, by the way, again, Donald Trump should be here tonight to talk with you and answer your questions. He's not. He refused to come. But understand that part of his plan is to put in place a national sales tax of at least 20% on everyday goods and necessities. And that, by economist estimates, independent economists, would cost you as the American consumer and taxpayer an additional $4,000 a year. Uh, I want you to meet Carol Nakanoff, a uh, political science professor at Swarthmore College. She's a registered Democrat who says she's leaning toward voting for you, has yet to make her final decision. Carol? Hi, Carol. Thank Good you. evening. Uh, thank Good you evening. for visiting us in Delaware County, um, Vice President Harris. My question is this. If you could accomplish only one major policy goal that required congressional action, what would it be and why? Well, there's not just one. I have to be honest with you, Carol. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to happen, but let's let's I think that maybe part of this point that I how I think about it is we've got to get past this era of politics and partisan politics, slowing down what we need to do in terms of progress in our country. And that means working across the aisle. I've done that before. We did it around whether it be what we were able to accomplish with the bipartisan infrastructure deal or some of the work that we have done in terms of dealing with gun safety. 
But we've got to work across the aisle. And it is my commitment to work with Democrats, with Republicans, with independents to deal with a number of issues, whether it be what we need to do in terms of housing and creating legislation that creates incentives for that, what we need to do to reinstate the freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do, whether it be what we need to do to actually invest in a substantial way in the industries of the future, in American-based manufacturing, in American-based industries where American workers and union workers have those jobs in a way that is good-paying jobs that gives people the dignity they deserve. Look, All of those areas I plan on working across the aisle and with Congress, including the issue of immigration, which we've got to fix. Let, let me ask you, you've talked about codifying Roe v. Wade. That would obviously require 60 votes in, in the Senate, a, a majority a, of the House. That's a big... That's a big leap. You don't, we don't have that yet. If that's not possible to codify it in the House, what do you do? I think we need to take a look at the filibuster, to be honest with you. But the, the reality of it is this. Let's talk about how we got here. When Donald Trump was president, he hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did as he intended. And now, in 20 states... We have Trump abortion bans that include punishing health care providers, doctors and nurses. In Texas, do you know they provide for prison for life? For a health care provider? For doing the job that they believe is in the best interest of their patient? J laws? Trump abortion bans? Some that make no exception even for rape or incest? One of the areas I special in as a pro specialized in as a prosecutor was crimes against women and children. The idea you would tell a survivor of a violation to their body that they have no right to make a decision about what happens to their body next? This is what's happening in our country. You all may have heard the stories. Women have died. Women have died because of these laws. And the suffering, I have to say, Anderson, traveling, for example, I, again, I was with Liz Cheney this week. She is unapologetically pro-life and will also tell you she doesn't agree with what's been happening. I, I find that many people I've met who are pro-life have said to me, you know, I didn't intend that this would happen. I, would, I didn't intend that women who are suffering a miscarriage would develop sepsis, as has happened many times. I didn't intend that women would die. I didn't intend that there would now be restrictions on access to in vitro fertilization. I didn't intend that there would be an effort to limit access to contraception. So, you know, this is probably one of the most fundamental freedoms that we as Americans could imagine, which is the freedom to literally make decisions about your own body. And on some issues, I think we've got to agree that partisanship should be put aside. And I'll close with this point. I know it is possible because when you look at the midterms, in so-called red states and so-called blue states, when this issue of freedom was on the ballot, the American people voted for freedom.